You know, I'm actually cool making that be a thing that I, I talk about as a thing. You know what? We'll do that. I'm fine letting that be something that we talk about for a little bit. Let me lower volume here a little bit. But honestly, if I if I were to try to thesis my channel now, it would be harm reduction. It did begin as me going, I'm fixated on atheism. Let's talk about atheism. And people did very, very lovingly note that I was a very, very angry atheist when I started. And over time, that changed and turn more into how can I try to produce religious harm? That's when I took on the anti-theist label. But then, over time, I realized that a lot of people who take on the anti-theist label, not all of them, but a lot of them, tend to actually want an erasure of religious culture from people and the thing is not all religion is bigotry a lot of us have a a predisposition towards religions because we've been personally harmed by them especially people who've been harmed by christianity and a lot of us tend to have a super negative view only on religion because of that and that was when I was okay taking the anti-theist label. But then I noticed that a lot of the company that would be anti-theist would end up being super bigoted in either other ways or would use the religiosity as an excuse to be bigoted. Like, let's say uh, somebody uses the two-spirit argument in favor of trans people and then somebody gives an argument against it that is basically the atheist uh, herder. The only thing that exists is the physical, that type of, sh that type of spiel. And you've probably seen that or heard that at least at some point, right? Where somebody who's a, a skeptic atheist will end up being an anti-feminist for a variety of reasons. I think that's the whole thing that happened between 2015-2016 with a lot of online atheism anyway. Is you end up having a lot of people who decided that they got the question about God right and therefore they had the question on life and everything about it right as well. They figured out God not real and because they figured out that very special and unique thing that means that they must then be right about a variety of other things. Hobo Sapien says usually because they can't get laid. Sometimes, sometimes the only thing that some people have is the argument on the internet. There's a quote from Matt Dillahunty that I actually really, really like, and it was one of the ones that made me have a little bit of introspection. If your only goal in doing the debate thing is to show other people how smart you are, then I don't have any use for you. And I largely agree with that quote and having met and hung out with Matt, it's, it's still a very worthwhile quote. Because most of what happens in online discourse can be summed down to what goal are you trying to accomplish? If your goal is to make yourself feel smart, seem smart, heal your inner child, as it were, that person who was shamed either by people on the internet or your parents or your friends, and so you are now this amalgam of all of the ways people have criticized you, and you're trying to find some way to fight against that, I guess. You're not very useful. And I'm not meaning useful to me, like you as an individual, the types of things that you will end up doing are not very useful to anyone around you or even yourself. Because when you are that jaded person, 
a lot of your behaviors end up being behaviors solely for the purpose of making yourself feel better, making yourself feel smart, making yourself feel like something you've done was worthwhile, whether or not it was. These are the types of people who will go onto Twitter and argue with people all day and night long. Because for a lot of them, it's all they have. They need to be right on the internet. Because if they're not, then it feels like something important has been taken away from them. They need that fight. This is why some people will die on stupid hills on the internet. Some people find that their pastime is fighting on the internet. I don't find that to be useful or helpful. It's why the ethos of my channel ended up changing from I want to be right about these things to I want to reduce harm. Because I recognize that was me as well. I didn't just like debating because it was the right thing to do. I liked debating because I liked feeling right. I liked feeling correct about things. I liked feeling like I was winning in a battle of wits. I know that. I'm, I'm not going to necessarily be ashamed about that because I recognize that's a thing that happens with a lot of people. We get that feeling of being right. We want to hold on to it. We love that feeling of self-righteousness that comes with that and then we explore that and we try to push to have that happen more often for ourselves it's not healthy it's actually the type of thing that can cause people to lose relationships ask yourself this have you ever been in a relationship where you feel like you've spent a lot of time trying to argue that you're right about a thing? About topics that didn't really matter? About things that weren't really important? And was dying on the hill that you were correct? So important that your partner got mad at you? And did this happen often enough that maybe you started more fights because of your need to be right? You couldn't let little situations that weren't important lie. So this is why I say that people like that on the internet that have to have the last word in the argument, that have to be right, even when they're wrong. I don't think they're going to end up having very happy lives going forward because that type of person is the same type of person who, in an otherwise loving relationship, will push their partner away from them because of their desperate need to fight. They only feel validated when they are in the middle of an argument and fighting and on the winning side. And you've probably been with somebody who had this mentality before, right? You've probably been around somebody who seemed like they were more interested in the conflict in any given situation than anything else. This is the type of person who eternally plays devil's advocate. They live for the argument. I don't... I don't care for those kinds of people that much anymore. Because while they can be fun sparring partners for debate stuff, if every single interaction you have with somebody is a conflict of some sort, that's going to eventually wear you down. That's going to eventually create an unhealthy environment of communication between you and that person. Eventually, you're going to hit a point where you ask yourself, is it worth it when every moment I spend with this person is some brand of conflict? And if your insecurity is hitting you that hard because of that conflict that is constantly happening, or your, their insecurity is happening that much because they need that conflict, they need to be right all the time, eventually you're going to stop wanting to spend time with that person. My problem is I was that person. And I know to a degree I still am that person. A lot of times I will pick fights just for the sake of having the fight. I'll do it on the internet a lot. I don't like that I do. I don't like when it happens, but I recognize that it does. 
it's a flaw of mine I haven't quite figured out how to manage completely. It's why I don't argue on Twitter as much as I used to. Shannon Q uh, actually had a really great point in regards to stuff like this. She's been an advocate for goal-oriented thinking. And I remember, I don't remember if it was me watching a video of hers or if it was a conversation I was having with her. It was one of the two. But I remember her saying, whenever you go into a situation, ask yourself, what are you trying to get out of it? What goal are you reaching for? Because if you're not reaching for a goal, if you're not trying to get something out of that conversation, of that interaction, of that fight... If you're not doing that, and all you're doing is just entering that conflict over and over and over and over again. You're going to find yourself in a lot more negative situations than positive ones. Because you're going around aimlessly, you're starting conflicts for no good reason, and when you're in those conflicts, you don't even know what it means to win. You don't know what it means to win in one of those conflicts. Because if you don't know what your goal is in any conversation, what's your, what's your win state? What does it mean to win? Is winning keeping your relationship? Is winning keeping your friendship? Is winning being factually correct on something? Are you being factually correct on something in such a way that you're creating a blowback effect where the person you're talking to who otherwise might have listened to your point of view that might have been correct doesn't want to listen to you because the way you're presenting yourself is as an asshole? Are you the type of person that doesn't care what people think about you at all? So much so that you're willing to hurt those around you in order to be correct? It's a good idea to try to put goals ahead of you. Figure out what your goal in a conflict is. Because otherwise, you will find yourself hurting more people around you. You'll find yourself abandoning more people around you. And that's one of the reasons why I changed the ethos of my channel to harm reduction. Because if it's just about being right, what am I working towards? What's the end result? What does the world look like when I'm done? Me being correct on a few things doesn't help anyone. It doesn't. But you can be correct on those things while working towards a goal. And in my case, that goal is harm reduction. It has changed to harm reduction, and it's been that way for years. It's why I tend to focus on bigots on the internet. Ways to deal with their rhetoric. Ways to attack the things that they are saying. Ways to defend yourself against them. Ways to compartmentalize the things they're saying so they don't hurt you as much. That's way more effective than just... Arguing better, arguing faster, being the more writer -er person on the internet. It's more important to me to make sure that people who otherwise would be in bad situations are in healthier situations, are in safer situations. Learning how to build those environments, how to identify uh, those environments, how to identify abuse from a spouse or abuse from a religious fundamentalist. Stuff that you might have complete me, uh, completely compartmentalized because you were it was normalized to you. Like, a lot of religious bigotry got normalized to me. Is it more important for me to do videos on why God not real? Or is it more important for me to do videos on God's probably not real... And the people who have an emotional investment in him being real have a tendency to harm people. And here's how you navigate that. And I don't always do a good job of doing that. In fact, I'd argue that I often do a poor job at doing that. 
but I feel like having that goal, having that roadmap to interaction, it does a lot more good than doing it blindly. Because like I said, when you do it blindly, you end up just fighting the same fight over and over again, not knowing what it looks like to win. Not knowing the point in time where you need to stop. Not knowing when you've engaged in so much assholatry, I guess we'll say, that even if you are correct in 15 billion different ways, nobody wants to listen to you. Nobody wants to hear you out. Nobody wants to consider what you're saying. Because considering what you're saying comes with giving the ground that somebody who's been a piece of shit to them was correct. And it's easier to convince people you're correct on something if you're not being a piece of shit to them. Because then they don't have to give that ground. And you might think to yourself, but if I'm right, that's all that matters. Not if you have a goal. Being right isn't all that matters if your goal is harm reduction, or if your goal is advocacy, or if your goal is convincing the person that you're correct. Is it more important for you to be correct, or is it more important for you to be correct and also be able to change the minds of the people around you so that they will also be more correct? If that's your goal, then changing the way you interact with people to be a more positive one instead of a more negative one is probably pertinent. So I wonder if Matt was, uh, was an XO in the Navy. He goes nuclear very quickly. I think, though, the re... So, if I, were to, if I were to guess the reason why Matt goes nuclear as quickly as he does, though, is he's been worn thin from his show. When he was on Atheist Experience for the amount... For, like, years he was doing it, you gotta think, he listened to every single type of bigotry that possibly could have been aimed at him or his loved ones as a job 24-7. Think about how I get when I'm obviously worn thin. When I can only handle 40 seconds of a quartering video before I'm just done. I'd imagine it's the same thing for him. There's only so many times you can listen to G-Man before you go, Hey, I'm done with this asshole. So, like, to a degree, I can understand it. But there was a point where Matt was uh, doing a debate where uh, his ex-wife ended up telling him... And I, I remember him going on a video talking about this. He used to use the uh, arg uh, argument from ignorance fallacy, I, don't, I believe. I can't remember the exact uh, wording on it, but there was a fallacy that he would point out with his opponents a lot. And his, his now ex-wife, wife at the time, told him, hey, you need to stop pointing out that fallacy when you're talking with people. It's not that you're incorrect. You're right that they're engaging in the fallacy. But when you just play fallacy bingo with them, they turn their ears off. They stop listening. They stop caring about what you're saying because you're not communicating to them on their level anymore. So they take the ears off and put them in their pocket? Yeah. It, eventually, you get to a point where if you are engaging in a certain way, the only thing you can gain from a conflict is the backfire effect, is that negative effect. If you recognize that a technique you're doing is causing that repeatedly, the problem isn't whether or not you're correct, TM. The problem is how you're approaching conversation. I stopped doing debates because my channel's ethos became harm reduction. Because my memory issues are bad enough that I forget important points. Even if I've got them written down on paper, I'll forget to look at them and do them. Because there's often times when I'm talking about a topic for a video and I'll think of one of the points that I wanted to say. 
or that I needed to say after I'm done with the video. And sometimes I can account for that in editing. You've probably seen a couple of videos where I've been like, hey, uh, like the video that I did about the, uh, the dude at the bar. Hey, there's this important piece of information to the story that I completely forgot about. Editing service is here to help uh, fill in that gap real quick. The problem with the debate is you only have the one chance. You have to get it done right the first time. And there are people who can. There are people who are very good at getting that done right the first time. I am not that person, though. I am not good at getting it done right the first time. Hell, even in recorded videos, I'll often repeat the same thing over and over again until I feel like I've said it the right, the right way. And in a debate where you've got limited time, that's just not a reliable technique for conveying information. Especially not when the person you're debating is such a flavor of bigot that making them look correct has a super negative detrimental effect on the people around you. I realize that if my goal was to stop harm, with my memory issues being what they are, there's a lot of ways in which I can just cause harm by debating. That's why I stopped. It's also why I try not to do as many arguments on the internet, just like in Twitter and shit. <laughs> Said bar friend is Cirrus's personal G-man. This is my personal 9-11. And I kind of hate that, because there's still a part of me that likes the idea of debating, but I recognize I shouldn't. For that reason. So the cool thing about text debates is that you can Google stuff between replies, provided you remember to Google them. Yeah, but then you have to ask yourself, what's the goal of the text debate? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to do? Is the goal to be right on the internet? If so, cool. Sylvie Snow says, not to take the wind out of your sails, but I wanted to debate you on why Vaporeon's not the most, uh, but not the best Pokemon for compatibility. You're right, it's Gardevoir. It is literally Gardevoir per the lore. She is literally the empathy Pokemon. Apologies for taking the wind out of your sails, Sylvie Snow. <laughs> Not where I was going, but I also can't refute that. <laughs> Gardevoir is a human, uh, like, egg group, but also amorphous. She's literally Slime Girl. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at with like channel direction stuff, and it's why a lot of that stuff, like debates and such, just haven't continued to happen on the channel, because I recognize that in my current state, and that's not going to improve. That's not going to get any better. My memory has improved in the last year, mostly because my mental health improved in the last year, not surrounding my channel, of course, but in general, my, my general happiness with life improved in the last year. Uh, gee, I wonder if there's any particular reason why that happened. But even though my, my general outlook and happiness with life have improved greatly, there's still only so far that can go in fixing my brain. But, I don't know. Uh, so, here's the fun part. Some people in the stream did not realize that uh, I was recording this entire time. This is technically a video, and uh, insert into the video tagline here.
Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.